of this nar well, this this whole ecosystem here. For Brendan Doyle, the owner of Great Marsh Shellfish Company, this land is a dream come true. I'm the only oyster farm on the North Shore. A dream that, as he tells it, is tough to break into. One needs buckets of patience, perseverance, and a bit of luck. A Navy veteran and the newest Massachusetts member of the oyster farming family. He grew up in Gloucester and tried to get into the seafood farming business decades ago. Every town in Massachusetts that has shellfish pretty much has a residency requirement. Gloucester was our only shot and we really quickly realized Gloucester was a no. It just got put on the back burner and I moved on. Brendan went into software sales, but never really stopped looking for opportunities in the shellfish arena. In 2017, it was all about to change. As soon as I saw, you know, Zero Hog Island for sale in Raleigh, I looked at it and I was like, wow, I could probably start an oyster farm here. But it was a probable, it wasn't a, it wasn't a guarantee. He had the land, but the procedural muck was much thicker than expected. The biggest impediment to aquaculture in Massachusetts is the way we permit it. It's almost like we're purposely put at odds with other um, interests within the state. And the biggest thing I think that puts us at odds is the uh, requirement for a exclusive latitude longitude marked off area that is now mine and that other fishermen are now excluded from. Uh, it's unfortunate. Oystering is an industry largely brought to us by leased land. In all of Massachusetts, fewer than five farmers own their land. Doyle is one of them. Despite Rowley being a right to farm town, it took him three and a half years of uncertain times to get the license to farm. I ordered shellfish seed before I had the final permit. So I was like, it was almost there. And I was like, okay, let's do this. In 2022, Doyle farmed his first batch of oysters. Awesome. So excited, he plucked them at two and a half inches, the minimum in Massachusetts. But a big question remained. Okay, are they gonna taste good? So and did you, right taste. out there, did you dig in? Oh, I, I had many samples. <laughs> Doyle's farm is in the middle of the Parker River Wildlife Refuge. This is beautiful. When the tide comes in, all this nutrient that's up here in the marsh comes in and then floods out with the tide. He credits the pristine nutrients that wash out over his oyster cages for a briny, buttery flavor. The flavor, that flavor all comes from this marshland, uh, the miroir, as they call it. May we recommend eating them al fresco. They're just calling our name, right? Yep. This is such a tough job. Cheers. There are a few places that are more synonymous with the oyster than Wellfleet. From farms to fair to fashion, a perfect place to make the world your oyster. One day on Facebook, somebody said, look what I do with my oyster shells. And I thought, huh, interesting. So it became an obsession after that. Grace Marks has turned that obsession into craftsmanship. I paint, I decoupage, I drill things, I attach things to it. I do table runners. I love gilding. From the stately serving trays to jewelry boxes. And they are a match. Gorgeous. This is decoupage, decoupage. and then it's gilded with gold foil. To personalized touches, she even uses them for her oil painting canvas. I don't sell the painted ones. Those are mine. You will find her walking the shores looking for the perfect shell. They are perfectly imperfect. Each one has their unique personality almost. They're also very tough. And how many shells did you say could go into one of these if it's what, six feet long? If it's six feet long, it'll probably be about 1,200 shells. 1,200? Yeah. Wow. Mark says collecting those oysters is a dirty job. A lot of shell fishermen, when they clean their farms, they bring them to the transfer station. I'll wear two or three masks when picking through them. So in the car, driving home, I could be wearing two or three masks <laughs> because of the smell. <laughs> but no bother, it's all for the beauty on the other side.
Wow, and Grace Marks also makes all sorts of oyster jewelry and leather goods. But there is no oyster art mm -hmm. displayed in her home because there are literally thousands of oysters scattered about in production for her various <laughs> projects. Makes sense. All right, still ahead from oyster farm to table.